Join me today in making some holiday cards. Today we will be making four wintry cards for the holidays, like Christmas, New Year's, or just as a fun thank you. This video is a little longer as we will be painting four cards. Feel free to jump around to watch the card that you wish to create. I will leave a link to these sketches which you can use to practice only and for all the supplies that I use in the description below. I will use masking fluid by Sennelier to keep my whites and use these three tools to apply my masking fluid. The first is a rubber color shaper. The second is for fine lines and details. Last, I use a cheap brush which helps with large spaces. I put tape on the end so I know not to paint with this brush. I show you how to use these three tools in my video on how to keep whites and I will link the video in the description. Always be sure to give your masking fluid a good shake before using. And I just put a little bit in an old lid. This ensures that I don't accidentally spill my bottle. I'm going to start adding masking fluid using my brush to cover the large areas. I'm going to start adding masking fluid using my brush to cover the large areas. Next I will go in with my liner tool to get the fine details and the color shaper gives me great dots like falling snow. Doing the same to all four paintings. This allows for my masking fluid to dry before I begin painting. After I'm finished and everything is dry, I can move on to painting my first layer. Going back and forth between paintings is a great way to step back, allowing things to dry and not overworking. You can use a kneaded eraser to rub off some of the graphite so it won't bleed. I'm going to start off this painting by using Hansa Yellow and being very delicate adding it wet on dry to our bush, making sure to leave some whites. This will be a mingled wash and I'm using the tip of my brush and moving it around in a squiggly motion. Try practicing on a separate piece of paper until you are comfortable. As the light on the bush goes from light to dark, I will mingle the wash next, adding Quin Gold, then into Burnt Sienna Light. Keeping those whites in between the bush is very important. It allows us to really get the feel that it is a bush and you can see the light peeking through. I'm going to have some grasses poking up through the snow over here, so I'm going to go into my yellow ochre and create little delicate lines to show those grass coming up. You want to be careful and watching your negative space painting here, because I'm going around some of the bits of snow that you're going to see, so you want to be very careful doing this. While that's all drying, I'm going to now go into my sky using cobalt blue. It's a nice cool blue that is really great for winter scenes. We're just going to dry brush this on using our wet on dry technique, going around our bush, going in between some of those sky holes, 
and this will give us a lot more control. You can always go into a little bit of water just to blend those shapes out in the sky so we have that illusion of those clouds, but some of them are great to have as hard edges. Now we're going to do our background trees. We don't want them too detailed, just enough to know that they're there. By mixing our cobalt blue and burnt sienna, we're going to get a lovely gray and I want to add just a touch of our cad red light to give it a little bit more of a purple feel, just because those oranges and reds that are in those trees will make it feel right. And I'm just going to dry brush those on and put them delicately in the back. You can go into a few of those sky holes so that you see it poking through and make sure that you're watching your negative space painting around the snow and the trees that are going to be in front. Using Burnt Sienna, I'm going to go into more detail and shadows into my grasses. Using a light wash of Cobalt Turquoise, I'm going to cool off my background trees, just adding a little bit of that color in the background. Using Burnt Umber and Cobalt Turquoise, I'm creating a cool gray and I'm going to use that for the snow that is in the front, just in the areas of shadow. Also using Manganese Blue and Cad Red Light, I will go into some negative space details. Then I decided to splatter with some cobalt turquoise, just for some fun variety. I'm going in with burnt sienna to add more value to our bushes and trees. Then burnt umber for the foreground, bushes, branches, and a mix of burnt umber and ultramarine blue for a deep brown. With a lighter brown going over the background trees to create depth, add your signature and you're done. Moving on to our bird, we are going to start with a wet on wet wash, mixing cobalt blue and burnt sienna for our lovely gray. Once our paper loses its shine, we can add our paint to give it a soft look. Now that it's dry, we can work on the bird. 
The head of the bird is black, which as you might know, I don't have. So let's make our own using indanthrin blue because I wanted a nice deep black and payroll red. And then we need to neutralize it by using cad yellow light. It doesn't take much yellow, so be careful. I like to have a slightly red or blue hint to it so it doesn't feel dead. I will test it out on a scrap paper and I think it looks good to me so we can move ahead. We will go in and fill this area black except for the eye. Then some black under the beak which goes into grays so we can touch some black where it's the darkest, clean out our brush and blend it over with some clean water making a nice gray. The top part of the beak is lighter so we can blend some of the black up there. This painting is almost monochromatic. Then we will go into his wings on this edge, then blend it out with clean water. We will add more detail later. There is a line that is more white along the wing. So just take some water while it's wet and being very careful, wipe out most of it and then you can blend out where you need to. Some of our bird is the gray we have been mixing all along with cobalt blue and burnt sienna. It's definitely down here on the stomach of our bird. Add some color, then with clean water, blend it out and fill the space. Then fill in the back of the wing tips. And if you get some in your tree branch, it's okay. We will be going over it with a darker color, so you won't see it anyway. Then we've got some of the darker gray in the tail. We will create later what looks like to be feathers once it's dry. Now for our claws, we want to fill those in. There's not a whole lot of light on them, so it might be easier to get those highlights using a jelly roll pen or a little bit of gouache because of how tiny they are. So I didn't even bother to put masking fluid on them. With my liner brush, I'm going to darken the bottom of the beak. On the top of the beak, I will darken just a touch along the top line and then soften it up with some clean water to curve that beak. The head is dry now, but I feel like it needs more life to it. So I'm adding more blue and creating a second layer. You can add more blue or red depending on the temperature you want it. Then we will darken up our tail here. It has some red in there and starting to add a few details moving down to our claws and making them darker. Moving to our branches, there won't be a lot of variation. I'm going to add burnt sienna to my black mix and I want to make sure I also have a cooler gray mix um, like the one we've been using for the belly and in the background. The branches have a lot of gray in them, but we really want to differentiate from the grays that we already have throughout our painting. And we want to add some warmth to it. We will use a wet on dry wash going into our warm brown and then our cooler gray to mingle our wash and give variety. It's okay if it's not perfectly straight either because it's a branch. It's okay if they're a little scraggly looking. Be careful painting around the claws. We want our branch to be a little lighter down there so you can see the claws better. The rest of my video for this bird sadly ended up 
blurry so you can't see anything. I show a little bit of that blurriness here. I finish the branches once dry and take off the masking fluid and finish up those light spots that are around the bird and the snow using a cooler blue and gray. Then I finish up all the details. You can see the final painting at the end of this painting section and have a link to the picture as well as hopefully some detailed notes and mixes on what I do in the final so you can go to that link and finish your painting. I am terribly sorry about how this ended because I really loved how this one turned out. Now we can begin our first wash on our deer card. Again, we will use a wet on wet technique, making sure it just loses its shine before adding any paint. I'm going to mingle my wash and use vertical strokes to give the appearance of background trees. I will use my cobalt blue and burnt sienna mix in varying degrees, pushing to more blue and more sienna to mingle the wash adding a few horizontal lines for the tree's branches. As our wash is drying, I want to create a milk or cream consistency mix of our same gray and go over it again. Not going over the same exact lines, but creating more foreground trees. And this will help us with our illusion of depth. For the deer's fur, we will start by using raw sienna, going over the areas of light colored fur using a wet on dry technique, so we can have more control and keep our areas of white fur. You can add paint and blend it out with clean water so that we have soft edges. Then using a light wash of our gray mix, I will add some shadows in the middle and foreground snow. Using burnt umber, we will paint the deer's ears, being sure to keep the white fur in the side of the ears. Then I will go and blend the same color down the face, neck, and body where the shadows are. Now we will go into our burnt sienna and quinacridone gold I want the fur to be a little more orange and it will be a nice complement to our bluish background. We will go in with a few brush strokes then blend it out with clean water. See how it's starting to pull forward? I'm just doing a flat wash on the legs. Add it a light wash to the snow just under the deer for some reflected light. And using burnt sienna, I will darken my shadows and blend it. This will deepen my values. I'm going to put a wash of it here because I feel it needs to be brighter and I'll add some to the face as well. Our darkest darks and lightest lights will be in our deer which will push him forward as the focal point. I will continue to darken my values using the same colors but using more pigment and less water. Then we will add a touch of fur in some areas which give the illusion that the whole animal has fur. I do this by painting short lines in a clustered area. You can blend out some to help create depth so some hairs will be lighter and darker softer and harder. Do this in both negative and positive space painting. You can darken the fur by adding burnt umber to the burnt sienna. Notice how I work on a couple of areas at a time, then going in with clean water to blend it. 
I do this so some of our color will start to set and I will have less bleeding and more blending. I will use the gray mixture for the nose and eyes and when dry add another layer of the gray mix but with more pigment and less water. Notice how this small section of the nose and eyes really helped this deer to pop. It doesn't take much to capture the eye. This is where we will have our deepest darks and our lightest whites. Adding another layer to our ears, hopping around helps us to gauge our values and keep them on the right track. Shading more by the eyes. I'm going to darken up some of my darkest darks, mixing with more burnt umber and less burnt sienna, and a touch of ultramarine blue. I want it darker, but to be a warm brown, not quite black. Wait till everything is completely dry for this. I want to go almost as dark as I can without going black. See how the nose is lighter in value now compared to the fur I just added? That's why we bounce around and add layers. We will be using this mix to darken the face. I'm getting some details on the neck, a little bit more fur. A bit more here. In some of these areas you need to think negative and positive space painting at the same time. A lot of where we are adding in the fur is where we are having a value shift going from dark to light or the other way around. This gives us that medium value we are looking for, adding more or less fur to achieve that shift. I'm going to create a really black black for our nose without using black. Taking what is left of my gray mix, adding blue in Danthrin and Pero Red, I will touch in to the eyes and ears a bit. Not everywhere, but I want to deepen it even more. We can add more details once we take off the masking fluid. I will use a jelly roll pen or gouache to add white fur around the cheeks and any other little areas of white we need. Just adding details, darkening some areas. I'm going to use this black mix, but lighten it with some water to create more of a violet for the shadows of the snow. I'm going to create some twigs and branches as well as shadows coming out of the snow then after you've done a few, blend some areas out. I'm putting in a shadow here that looks like a valley. I added more blue to my shadow color and this is our middle ground. We want more details than the background, but less than our foreground. Now we need to let it be completely dry before we add anything else. We've taken off the masking fluid and it's time to touch up anything our masking fluid covered or missed. We'll start with the nose and the ears, then adding the shadow just under the chin and fur in the shadow of the neck. Whenever you add masking fluid, you have to do some softening and touching up because it leaves such hard lines and sometimes it goes a little bit over the intended lines. Now we are going to create some shadows in the snow. If you observe it, it's not just white and it has a lot of reflected light and colors that bounce around it. So I will use some grayish blues from the sky and the colors of the fur that would be reflecting on it. I'm not covering all of the snow on its back. I still want to leave our highlights pure white. Then add shading to the fur on the back legs. We will now add some branches, weeds, and things sticking out of the snow. I will be using our deep brown mix and gray mix alternating between them. 
You don't need to copy every single branch that you see, just put in some to indicate what's going on. You can add a little more or a little less than what I have, just make sure you don't have too much. This is in the middle ground and we want to make sure that it stays in the middle area and doesn't have too much going on. After adding our trees and branches, I make a few shadows on the ground. You don't have to show every single one, just a few to indicate that there are shadows there. I felt like the snow on the deer's back needed to have some darker values, so we will add those. I'm done with the whole painting overall. Now we get to add some gouache so it looks like it's snowing. But first, we will add some white details like fur by the face, the neck, the ears. He has some snow on the top of his head and I'm going to also add some snow throughout the deer. Then he won't get too much. Use some scrap paper to cover up the deer. You want to create a milk to cream consistency and use a toothbrush to splatter the snow. I'm okay with some of the splatter getting on the deer. I just don't want too much where he is closer in the foreground. So it will appear to have less snow falling in front of him than if he was further back. Don't forget to sign your name, and as always, I have a few things I always like to correct that I see just after I sign it. That's still okay. And you're finished, and you have a beautiful winter card. Again, for this wash, we will use the same gray mix, but this one will be a lot lighter and warmer by adding more burnt sienna to our mix using a wet on wet technique. You can check on other paintings while you wait for it to lose its shine. It's okay if I go over the branches because we will be painting them darker, so I only need to go around the berries. I'm going to be very sporadic with this wash and if I have some areas of white, I'm okay with that. It will give us a nice illusion. I definitely want to have gray around the berries because that is where the frost will be on them and we want it to show up. One other thing I'm going to do is make it look like there's some faint berries in the background with some cad red light just by painting little dots of red while it's still wet and they will bleed out. I'm going to add a little bit of darker gray in some areas remembering that it will dry lighter. Our background is dry and I will use deep scarlet for the first layer of my berries. Then I will use a gray mix of cobalt blue and burnt sienna with a deep scarlet for the shadows on the berries. For the branch I will use burnt sienna and burnt umber mixed and paint a flat wash. Then I will add blue indanthrin to the mix for the shadows of the branch and the leaves on the end of the berries. I've decided that the grays in the background are too light, so I'm going to add another wash, deepening our values. I really want the frost in this painting to pop, 
I will wet the whole background and when it loses its shine, add our second layer. Then I will use the same gray mix with more pigment at a milk consistency to create more shadows and branches in the background. They will bleed out and be soft. I will add a few more background berries to add more red throughout our painting. And then don't touch it till it dries. Take off the masking fluid and using a liner brush touch up the berries and branches. I can make the frost look more natural, maybe cover up some completely if I feel like I have too much, doing the same for the leaves and the branches. You can also touch up the frost on the gray side with negative painting. And I'm finished with the painting. I want to add some words as I feel this area is a little blank, so I will write Merry Christmas. But you could write Happy Holidays or Thank You, whatever you would like. I will write it in pencil first and then go over it with my Como Revy metallic gold watercolors and add a few snowflakes and little dots as well. Then you sign it and it's ready to go. I hope you enjoyed creating these cards with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Bye!